the resources that we just looked at very specific to Washington, D.C., um, but now we have like the Library of Congress, which is, of course, a much larger entity. Um, it's uh, national uh, resources, international resources, even to an extent. Um, they also have a research guide that you can look at. Um, but what I want to specifically point out is um, looking at uh, their photograph collection, um, their maps, which are very, uh, very useful. Um, they also have a newspaper database called Chronicling America, which is such a huge database uh, when it comes to newspapers. And I'll, I'll show you that in practice as well. And then there's also the Historic American Building Survey, uh, which is from the National Park Service. It is hosted um, on the Library of Congress website. If you're looking at a historic site, I would say check out the survey. Um, you can do a search, uh, see if there's a, a, um, a record about it. Uh, they sometimes include um, photographs, whether they be historic or contemporary. Um, they include uh, maps, sometimes permits, uh, other kinds of documentation. So definitely check out the Historic American Building Survey um, if you're going to be um, doing your research. So the online catalog here, there's so much stuff. There's so much free stuff available um, that, again, like I was telling you all before, uh, it can be slightly overwhelming. Um, but here you go. There's different collections here, you know, um, architecture in the South, if that's your interest. Um, there's, you know, you could look at historic buildings. Um, there's just so much on the Library of Congress in the way of finding um, historic uh, buildings. So you would just search here, or you can look at a specific collection if, you're, if you have a specific interest. Um, I will say the Carol Highsmith um, collection that has a ton of uh, mostly kind of contemporary um, images of DC, but again, that's something else to look at if you're if you're trying to find um, pictures of your historic side of your house or your neighborhood. Um, and like I was mentioning here, the uh, historic American Building Survey. Um, let me see if I can find. Um, anything specific, I think we could check out this building entry that I had searched for, I guess not. Um, I'm trying to think of a site that we could look at that I know has, has stuff. I will think of something and I will come back to this when I'm like showing you all the example, but they have, like I said, uh, different records. So it gives like kind of sometimes a history of the site. Uh, but it also offers uh, photographs that were taken during the survey. And then sometimes, like I had mentioned, um, line drawings like you see up here um, for this historic district, um, things like that. So a lot of this is digitized. Um, if something is not available that is digitized, you might actually have to go to the Library of Congress, um, which I cannot do at this moment. But just keep in mind like what you looked for on here and make a note of like what you were trying to find through the, for, through the building survey. Um, because once you're able to kind of go to uh, the library, they, they might have it um, in their files, the, the stuff that you might not have been able to find previously. Um, let's see. Okay, so maps. I'm so excited about maps. I was excited to show you guys all of this. Um, the Sanborn Fire Insurance Maps. If you have never looked at these before, um, they are like I, in the title, fire insurance uh, maps. And uh, they're kind of color coordinated and the survey, if you look at the key here, as you can see, um, they show you like, what is a building made out of? Um, what is it constructed out of? Um, how many floors does it have? Uh, what was it used, uh, used for? So um, some of like the more major kind of public buildings like churches or schools, um, sometimes they will label them on the map specifically, um, but if not, like if you're looking up your house, um, it'll show you here, um, kind of like it's a dwelling. Uh, what was it made out of? The red uh, signifies like a brick or tile building. Um, yellow is a frame building. Things of that nature. So uh, I have the link to the key here too, because like once you start getting into it, it can, um, it's good to know like what exactly you're looking at. Uh, with all this. And again, they have like all these different cities and towns. Um, Washington, D.C. 
which uh, I will show you all exactly how to look through one when I'm doing my little example, but to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, it only has a, a few years, so it's not like every year they, they were making one of these, and the ones that they have on the Library of Congress website, um, they're kind of more toward like um, the early 20th century. Um, and what you would have here is like an index, you know, sometimes by street, or like I was mentioning, sometimes by lot and square number. Um, so here you go, and then you would just look at, uh, you would, you would uh, look through the index, you would find which specific map number, as you see here, that you uh, are looking for based on like the address uh, or the um, or the lot number that you that you were trying to find. And then look through here, and then to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like again, here we go. So these are what they, this is what this map uh, looks like, um, all the insurance maps. Um, as you can see here, sometimes it, um, it's a dwelling because of the D here. It has two floors. You can see in the corner here. These little circles signify chimneys sometimes. Uh, you can find out like, oh, there's a two-story house, but there's a one-story structure behind it. What could have that been? Um, it could be like a garage maybe. Um, see stucco here. So it kind of gives you some cool information. Um, it is by, as you can see here, the um, square and the lot number. Um, but these are always great to look at, especially when you're trying to figure out like how maybe the block around you changed over time or maybe how your own house changed over time uh, or what it was, you know, what it was made out of or like what used to be there, um, you know. Um, so I would definitely recommend, you know, when you're starting out too, to like look at these maps. They're fascinating. You can really get lost in them. I have. Um, and again, I have the key for you here that you can look at. Uh, when you're first getting started to look at the maps. And again, um, at the end of the, my little PowerPoint here, when I'm doing the example, I'll show you specifically like how to look through the key, how to find uh, your site on the map. So those are the fire insurance maps. Another good map to uh, look at is the uh, based real estate atlas. So like the insurance map, you'll have like an index or a key. Um, the map is broken up into different fragments. So uh, based on the um the key it'll it'll point you into the direction of the um the fragment of the map that you want to look at so say here you'd have square like i was mentioning um so make sure again when you're doing your research um make a note of that square number the square and lot number because for maps like this or when you're looking at permits um it would just make your day so much easier that way you're not like trying to figure out on this map like where your house is, um, which you can totally do. But uh, again, it's just easier when you have um, some background information going into looking at these. All right, Chronicling America, one of my favorite newspaper databases. So these are newspapers from all over the country. Um, I think sometimes even there's some from different parts of the world, but I think it's just America as the name implies. But what you can do is you can specifically look at um, the different states. So we'd be looking at District of Columbia, and then you can um, kind of bracket it into the time period that you're specifically looking for. Um, so here it goes to uh, 1789 to 1963. That is such a huge timeline um, and it's really great to be able to look at historic uh, newspapers that far back in time. Um, so yeah you would just kind of pick and choose what you're specifically looking for, um, the time period, and again you know whatever you're searching for put it into uh, parentheses. Um, that way your search will be way more specific and that way you, again if you're trying to look up your address and you say like street, it starts showing you like every time street was mentioned in every newspaper in DC over the course of 100, over 100 years. Um, so you can also only show front pages if you're looking at um, something that you think might be more notable in, in the history of DC or like something that would make the front page of the news, you can just uh, specify it to only front pages. Um, you can sort it by relevance, state, title, and date. What I like to do with any um, newspaper databases, and you do not have to do this yourself, um, I like to 
uh, sort it by date. And I like to have like the earliest newspapers first because I always find that really fun and fascinating. Um, and also it kind of sets up a nice timeline going forward in history um, if, you're, if, if that's what you're trying to look for. So yeah, and you can do list view, you can do gallery view. And again, it, if you see these little red marks here, um, it highlights that um, the term that you were looking for in all of all these different newspapers, say so like the Washington Times, the Evening Star, um, the National Tribune, um, things like that. So this is a great resource because it kind of has everything under one roof and you can um, look through just a ton of different newspapers um, in whatever time period you're specifically interested in and in whatever state you're interested in. Um, so yeah, a great resource. Um, something else you could really get lost in, uh, into. Um, so make sure you make your search term as specific as possible. So those um, are the resources I'd like to highlight from the Library of Congress. Um, again, there's just so much included on the website that you can really get into it, start exploring more. There's a ton of stuff, but these are the things specifically that I think are uh, very helpful when you're doing uh, research on a historic site or neighborhood or house. Um, so I hope these are helpful to you as well. And again, um, once this PowerPoint is shared, you can just click on the link and it'll take you right there. So the National Archives, again, like the Library of Congress, um, it is a huge swath of stuff from all over the country. Um, but, and there's all different types of resources you can find, photographs, documents, and many other different types of records. Um, they have a web page here called uh, What's Online, which I always think is great to see. Um, and it kind of walks you through, you know, what you can, how you can do your research online. Um, they include like a section for guides that you can look at. And then there's like the National Archives catalog that you can look at, digital records. Um, National Archives um, catalog includes pictures. Um, you can kind of see it all down the side here, uh, what kind of materials you're looking for on the left hand side. Um, maps and charts, uh, charts, web pages, artifacts, uh, photographs, uh, moving images, which is pretty interesting, um, or just text uh, documents. Um, you could refine it by date on the side here. So it's a lot of information, but luckily, you know, you just have to refine it a little bit and, and you can find the specific thing that you're looking for. Um, so something that uh, we used the National Archives for was our uh, tour of St. Elizabeth's Hospital, um, which you can see on our app. Um, it is a virtual tour. And up here, you can see like web pages, documents, images. Um, you can really refine it to what specifically you're looking for. Um, so I looked up St. Elizabeth's. I, I used the quotations. Um, you can see photos of the old superintendents. Uh, the deeper you get into it, you can, uh, there's like um, other kinds of documents. Um, there was like a, a booklet for um, information about patients. Um, there was uh, just historic photos of the hospital itself. Um, so yeah, so definitely check out the National Archives. Try to refine, just make sure you're refining your search because it is just such a huge amount of information that it could easily become overwhelming. Um, and again, make sure you use these tabs up here what is actually available online, which I think is a very useful tab when uh, we're just doing our online research. 